The Patrol Boat River, or PBR. These small, rigid-hauled patrol boats were made famous for their use in the Vietnam War from 1966 until 1975. 718 were manufactured, with only one authentic preserved boat operational today. These boats saw significant and varied use in the rivers of Vietnam in areas such as the Mekong Delta, the Rung Sat Special Zone, and the Saigon River. Duties for the boats included searching river traffic for weapons smuggling and inserting and extracting Navy SEAL teams. PBRs were the most common craft in the River Patrol Force, Task Force 116. The boats were further employed by the United States Army's 458th Transport Company, the 458th Sea Tigers, who used them for securing harbors and coastlines. PBRs are sometimes mistakenly referred to as swift boats. This moniker belonged to the larger 50-foot patrol craft FAST, which also saw significant action in Vietnam, performing many of the same duties as the PBR. Swift boats were larger and slightly faster. A Mark I had a top speed of 59 kilometers an hour, 37 miles per hour, versus a PBR, which had a top speed of 52.8 kilometers an hour, or almost 33 miles per hour. The other popular craft used for river assault duties was the Monitor, a modified landing craft. These were 60 feet in length. They were slow, but heavily armed with a 40 millimeter cannon. Some equipped flamethrowers. All these boats would contribute to the so-called Brown Water Navy in Vietnam, termed due to the muddy conditions of the Vietnam rivers and deltas. PBRs were the most numerously built and famous boat of the three. In popular culture, of course, the PBR has been made the most famous of all patrol craft to serve in the Vietnam War, playing a major part in the 1979 film Apocalypse Now. An unarmed PBR replica even pops up in the Grand Tour, piloted by none other than Jeremy Clarkson. The key to the success of the PBR was the water jet drive, which allowed operation in the shallow, muddy, weed-choked rivers of Vietnam. Traditional propeller-driven boats in such rivers became bogged down and easily entangled. Power came from dual 180 horsepower diesel engines, with Jacuzzi Brother water jet drives. Jet pumps shot out streams of water from nozzles located below the waterline on the stern. Steering was accomplished by rotating the nozzles left or right. For stern propulsion, a U-gate slipped down over the nozzles and rerouted the flow 180 degrees, propelling the boat backward. The jet drive made for quick stops and easy turning. The PBR was lightweight with its fiberglass hull. It displaced 8.9 tons and drew only about 2 feet or 0.6 meters of water fully loaded. The Mark I was 31 feet in length, the Mark II 32 feet. The design overall was not complicated for the military. It was based on an existing Hatteras yacht hull. Operating PBRs was a dangerous job, with the majority of Vietnam's rivers surrounded by thick canopies to cover the enemy. PBRs usually operated in pairs and were crewed by four men, all trained to do each other's job. For their size, the boats were heavily armed. At the bow were twin 50 caliber machine guns in a shielded tub. At the stern, another 50 caliber machine gun. One to two M60 light machine guns were further mounted on the port and starboard sides. Most ships had one Mark 18 grenade launcher. Other arrangements could include an 81mm mortar and 20mm automatic cannon. The boat came equipped with a radar system and two radios. Defense was the boat's biggest weakness. They often had to rely on their maneuverability, acceleration and firepower to get out of trouble. The boats had some ceramic armor shielding for the machine guns with a quarter-inch thick steel armor plate for the controlled cockpit. The crew could further arrange ballistic blankets for added protection. One advantage was the thin hull could be repaired quickly, and some explosive enemy ordnance would pass through the hull rather than exploding. Rivers played a major role in the Vietnam War. Vietnam has an intricate river system with more than 2,360 rivers with a length greater than 10 kilometers. River engagements were frequent and sometimes large in scope. On one patrol during the 31st of October 1966, two PBRs engaged two Viet Cong Sampams. This escalated into a three-hour battle that saw relentless attacks from PBR crews, 
including calling in attack helicopter strikes. Uh, this is 4-3. Do you have the uh, smoke on the beach? Uh, it's here. That's affirmative. Uh, Roger, that's the uh, target area there. Kilo, Roger. Now, this is uh, Kilo. Uh, we'll make a fire and run over. Uh, Kilo, this is 4-3. Uh, let me know when you commence your run, and uh, we'll come in uh, behind you there. The engagement cost the Viet Cong upwards of 1,000 men, 50 vessels, and disruption of a major logistics operation. James E. Williams, commanding PBR 105, received the Medal of Honor for the engagement and is considered the most heavily decorated enlisted sailor in U.S. Navy history. Maintenance on the boats was paramount. Reliability was essential to getting crews home alive. Patrols took place day and night. They usually began from a mothership. They would last upwards to 18 hours, but for special operations, they could be much longer. Monsoon season was particularly hard on the boats, which operated in all types of weather. Non-stop rain corrodes much aboard a ship. Engines, pumps, and ammunition required constant maintenance. The Mark II River patrol boat introduced in 1967 was introduced to improve engine power and reliability. By 1969, there were 132 Mark IIs and 120 Mark I PBRs in Vietnam. If patrols delayed too long due to rain, the Viet Cong would jump on this opportunity to dig bunkers along the rivers and set up ambushes. PBR crews knew this, of course, and would coordinate with U.S. Navy attack helicopters on standby during times of anticipated ambush. PBRs were often tasked with drawing out these ambushes, then falling back and waiting for air support. It was dangerous work. Rivers were essential to the Vietnamese economy. Half of South Vietnam's population lived along a river. Searching boats was a delicate and dangerous job. Viet Cong wore no uniforms. At the height of the war, two to three hundred sampans were checked every day. If done tactfully, vital information could be gathered during this time. PBR operators became detectives. They had to gauge if someone was carrying more rice or fuel than they needed. The Viet Cong were notorious for using women and children in their operations. Searching boats was an awful experience for civilians and soldiers alike, both terrified of each other. But the boats did offer some hope to many South Vietnamese civilians. Many Vietnamese who used the rivers for commerce were often extorted by the Viet Cong, who would charge taxes or conscript river goers under the threat of violence. Communist forces carried out an estimated 1,000 small-scale river-based attacks each month in 1966. The Brownwater Navy offered some hope of ending this. Navy riverboats further aided civilians by providing supplies and medical aid to villages along rivers, when able. U.S. Navy river forces killed 3,000 communist soldiers and sank, damaged, or captured upward to 6,500 boats. One of every three PBR sailors was wounded during his tour of duty. Despite this, PBRs never had a shortage of manpower. Volunteers from across the Navy were keen to serve aboard the boats, and it was one of the most respected positions in the Navy. It is unknown how many civilians were the victim of riverboat activity. It is likely many civilian lives were destroyed by this war, being fought on the river, which was their backyard and livelihood. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this muddy and bloody episode on Vietnam patrol boats. Take care, stay dry, and we'll see you in the next one.